In this video, we will see how EMS for SOLIDWORKS can be used to study the fringing of electric field. To do that, I'm going to take a model that has the following components. We have four plates that are made of conductor, say copper, and these four plates are actually enclosed inside a substrate and surrounding the substrate is the air. So if I go ahead and hide the air, you will see that there are four plates that are enclosed inside a substrate that's in light green in color. So let me go ahead and show the air back. So the objective of this simulation will be to study the fringing of electric field that arises when you apply voltage to the plates. To do that, we will employ electrostatic simulation inside EMS. Here I have a study and study is a term which is used by EMS to organize its simulations. This is an electrostatic study. Once you define the study, we have to apply material to the various components. As I mentioned earlier, the plates are made of copper. To apply material, you just right click and select apply material. EMS contains a material library that can be fully customizable and it contains some commonly used materials such as conductor materials from where I can apply copper. It also contains other materials such as substrates from various manufacturers, electric steels from various manufacturers, permanent magnets, etc. In this particular example, the board is made of a material from Rogers Corporation and the name of the material is TMM-10. And finally, the outside is just air geometry. Once we have defined the materials, now it's time to define the voltage. The two plates shown in blue have a positive 5 volt and we also apply a negative 5 volt to the other two plates that are shown here. So we have two voltages, two plates kept at positive 5 volts and the other two plates kept at negative 5 volts. So the objective now is to solve this and take a look at the electric field distribution. So I have solved this study and let us jump straight into the results. First of all, let's take a section plot sectioning from the front view of the electric field distribution. This is the electric field distribution inside the model when you take a section through the model. Notice a very high electric field between the plates as expected and also a fringing of electric fields that you see in the top. The same can be viewed from the top view to see the fringing on the other direction or the other dimension. Here is the electric field as viewed from the top and I have again taken a section to show you a section plot of this electric field. Clearly you can see the fringing of this electric field little stretched outside the four copper plates. You can study the magnitude of those electric fields also from the color chart. We can also view these electric fields as a vector plot. Here again is a front view of the same electric field as a vector plot and these vectors clearly tell you the magnitude and the amount of fringing that occurs. EMS is a 3D solver. As a result, one can actually plot these electric fields as three-dimensional plots. Here, 
I'm going to plot the electric field in EMS as a 3D plot. And I have also taken uh, a section from the top view. So you can see the distribution of electric field as a 3D plot in one section through the front view and also as a section through the top view. Thus, we can easily visualize electric fields either as section plots or vectors or as 3D plots. Finally, some users might like to see the quantitative value of this electric field, say along a particular direction or a line. So here I have a line that I have drawn in SOLIDWORKS. We can look at the front view to see the distance of the line from the edges of the copper plate. The objective is really, I would like to find the electric field along this line. To do this, we use what is called as a 2D plot in EMS. We basically tell the program the starting and the end point of the line segment. And then when you say, okay, EMS plots the electric field along that line. Notice that it also gives you the numerical value of the electric field along the line. Now this electric field values can be exported either into Excel format or a text format. Next we will see what happens when I make a design change. For example, we will go back to the original model and then we will open the plates and then we will change the distance between the plates. So let's say that the first plate is now at 0.4 inch from the center and then each of these plates is maybe 0.2 inches and thus we have now moved the plates away from each other. So this is what we would call as a design change. Now when you make a design change, when you come back to the assembly, the SOLIDWORKS rebuilds your assembly and as a result you will be able to now study the new assembly in EMS. Now notice that automatically you can see as compared to the previous simulation, the conductor material are separated by a wider gap. We can go back to EMS and what we can do is we can clone this study. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this study and I'm going to call this study three and then here I can say plates are further. So what does EMS do when you clone a study is automatically copies everything from the previous study onto the new study. And now all I need to do is pull the latest geometry from SOLIDWORKS that enables me to have the new geometry. Notice that all the materials that I applied earlier, they come through in the new study. So I don't have to repeat anything that I did as far as the setup of the simulation is concerned. The voltage positive 5 for those two uh, copper plates and the negative 5 are also intact. Now all that is required for us to do is just simply right click on the study and select run to solve the simulation. Once the simulation has completed, we will take a look at the results and compare it vis-a-vis -vis the previous study. The simulation has completed. Now we can take a look at the new results. So again, let's look at the section plot of the electric field from the front view. Notice now the new fringing pattern that you observe 
you can see very high values of electric field at the corners and then you can see the extent of the fringing which is little different than what we saw when the plates were closer together. But the value of the electric field nevertheless has reduced because the distance between the plates have increased. Similarly, you can view the same thing from the top. You can see the extent of fringing as well as the value of the electric field. All of them have changed as compared to the previous simulation. And we can now take a look at the electric field along the line and that's now has a similar shape but the value has come down. So you can now see how when you incorporate a design change in your model you will be easily able to look at the effect of the design change on your fringing and on the electric field along a particular line segment as we showed you right now. Now finally I'm going to show you how you can compare the electric field along the line between the two studies. So if you go to the compare results tab here you can select the previous study and when you say OK, the program will plot the electric field along the same line for case 1 where the plates were closer and case 2 where the plates were further apart. In this particular example, in study 2, this is the red one is where the plates were closer towards each other and study 3 where the plates were further away from each other notice that the fringing of electric field is actually higher along the line when the plates are further away from each other. Although when the plates are further away from each other, the value of the electric field itself in between the two plates is much lower. So this comparison also helps you to find out what is the optimal spacing between your conductors and it can actually help you to understand the effect of fringing for various spacing between your conductors.